Angular offers the ability to create powerful animations and activate them based on a variety of different factors. You can place animations on any HTML elements and make them occur based on Angular life cycles, user events, and more. Now, one of the changes from Angular 2 to 4 was the fact that they moved the animation functions from the Angular core library into their own animations library. This means that if you wish to integrate animations with your own Angular 4 app, you will need to use NPM to install the animations package as well as import the library within the app.module.ts file. So let's get started with that and then we'll figure out how Angular 4 animations work. So being that this tutorial is a part of the free Angular 4 course, we already have a project set up and ready to go if you were following along. So, but if you've landed on this tutorial without having followed along with the previous videos, make sure you use the Angular command line interface to generate a new Angular project. And this way, we'll all be on the same page. So once you've done that, or you already have one, make sure you're in the project folder in the console of your Angular app. And let's go ahead and type npm install at angular animations at latest and save it to our package.json file. So again, this is one of the steps that differs from using and integrating animations uh, based on Angular 2 verse 4. So 4, you have to do to do this, but when, if you're using Angular 2, you didn't necessarily. So now let's go over to our code editor and we're going to hop into our app.module.ts file here. Now, if you generate a new project just now, it may look slightly different. You're not going to see these things, uh, but still it's the same exact process when you're integrating animations. So we need to import this line right here. So basically you're importing the browser animations module from the Angular platform browser animations. Now that's just the first step. You import it. Now we actually have to import it into the imports array of our ng module decorator. So we add a simple comma, copy this name right here, and paste. All right, so that is all we have to do there. So let's go ahead and get the component ready for our animation. So let's just say, for example, that the component that we want to animate is our default app.component.ts that is generated when we use the Angular command line interface to create a new project. So the first thing that's required is to import some of the animation functions to the top of the intended component. So to do that, I'm simply going to paste in, by the way, I'm following the written tutorial, this line right here. So what's happening here is we have an import and we're importing a trigger, state, style, transition, animate and keyframes functions from Angular animations, which we installed. All right, so I'll go over each one of these in more detail very shortly. Now, all of these functions here that I just listed off, they're all pretty much required with exception to keyframes. And if your component template won't include multi-step animations, then you can emit keyframes right here. So next, we have to add the animations property to the component decorator. So for now, I'm just going to get this out just to give ourselves some space. We'll get rid of that too. So after styles, we'll add animations right here. All right. So now the first step is to use animation triggers. So we have to use the trigger function, which we imported up here at the top. So to do that, trigger. And the first argument accepts the name of the trigger. And the second argument will accept all the other animation functions that we imported. All right, so what we'll name this is just my awesome animation. And then we open this up in brackets. So also we can put a comma here and that's there so that you can define multiple animations or multiple triggers. And that's where these all go. All right, so next up are animation states. So the state function allows you to define different states that you can call and transition between. So the first argument accepts a unique name, just like this trigger does. And the second argument accepts the style function. So the style function allows you to apply an object with the web animation property names and associated values. So expanding on our previous example, let's continue on here in the middle. I'm gonna increase the size just so we can see things a little bit better here. And 
we define state, and we'll make this one small. You wanna make the names relevant based on what's happening between these states of your animation. So we'll just say this is small. And then the second argument, we'll add style as an object. And inside of here, we'll just use transform and we'll scale it and we'll set it at one. So this is the default size based on what's happening uh, in the CSS. All right, now let's add a second state. Now, just to keep things simple, I will copy this and paste it. We'll make this one large. And the only thing we're going to change is scale from one to 1.2. All right, so we have two different states here where the scale property is going from one to 1.2. So next up is the transition function. And the transition function is what makes the actual animations occur. So the first argument accepts the direction between the two different states. For instance, are we going from small to large, large to small, or basically either or? Uh, and then the second argument accepts the animate function. So the animate function allows you to define the length, delay, and easing of the transition. It also allows you to, des to designate the style function where you could define styles while the transitions are taking place or the keyframes function it accepts for multi-step animations, both of which are placed in the second argument of the animate function. So for now, we're going to omit the second argument of the animate function when we write it. So going back, we're going to make our transition. And for now, we're just gonna make it go from small to large. And then in the second argument, animate, and we'll make this last maybe just 300 milliseconds. And we could also put a delay if we want in this uh, next section, or we could just add easing. So I'm gonna make ease in. And that changes how the animation takes place. So this transition is defining the length of the transition as well as the easing type. And when an HTML element that uses the my awesome animation trigger goes from the small state to the large state. So let's leave it like this for now, but we will revisit this code snippet shortly. So now let's attach the animation in the template. So let's go ahead up here. And our template is going to be very simple. We're just gonna have a single paragraph element. So let's attach the animation to that element and add a click event bound to a method. So up here, we'll add in a P. And this is how we attach animations to different HTML elements. So we had at, and then my, the actual name, which is my awesome animation. Then we bind it to a template expression, which is usually just a property defined in your component. We'll name it state. And then we're gonna add a click event. So when a user clicks on it, we're going to call a custom method that we will create called animate me, and that's that, all right? So we'll put in some content, I will animate, and then close out the paragraph tag. So as you can see, to attach an animation to an HTML element, you wrap brackets around the trigger name preceded by an at symbol. You bind it to a ex template expression, which in this case is a property that will be defined in the component class. Now, before we do that, let's give our paragraph some style in the styles property right here. So P, we'll make a width of 200 pixels. Background, we'll make it light gray, just so we can see it. Margin, 100 pixels auto that will center it text align center to center the text in the actual paragraph tag and then padding we'll give it some padding like 200 pixels and then font size 1.5 em all right great so coming back here real quickly i'm going to make sure we have ng serve ran and so now this is what it should look like in your browser nothing too exciting uh, if we click it, of course, we're going to get an error because we haven't defined those properties or that method. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So coming down here, we'll first define our state property. So state with the type of string equals, we're going to, by default, when the app loads, make it the small state, which is defined right here. All right, 
Then let's create the animate me property. By the way, we can get rid of all this stuff right here from the previous lessons as we don't need them. So animate me this dot state equals and we're just going to do what's called a ternary operator. It's going to toggle between small and large when animate me is called, which again is called by a click event. So this dot state equals small large. So if it's small, we're going to make it large. Otherwise, make it small. Save it. We'll go back to our browser. And now, look at that. So if you notice, the animation at this point only works in one direction because we only have one set of transition properties going from small to large. So to make it work in both directions, we can actually make a very simple one character change to our code. So right here, if we add this, now the animation will work smoothly in both directions from small to large and large to small. Very, very, very cool. All right, so we can also add style during the transitions and we can define it within the transition function. So to do that, what we would do now is in the second argument of the animate function, we add a comma and we add style and an object. So now we can just give it any other styles based on the web animation API. So we'll try transform again with translate Y. So that's on the vertical axis, 40 pixels. So let's save that, go back to our project and look at that. Kind of looks a little bit silly, but I'm just demonstrating what you can do, which there's a lot that you can do. And so that brings us to the next and final section of animation that I'll cover, and that is keyframe animations. So the second argument of the animate function also accepts the keyframes function, and this allows you to create elaborate sequence-based animations. So to do that, let's go ahead and get rid of this stuff right here. And by the way, we have a bunch of, there we go. Let's go ahead and add keyframes. And this is wrapped in an array. And then it accepts a bunch of style properties. So style, again, it's a object. So opacity, we can make it zero. And then we'll also add transform. We'll make it translate Y, which is vertical at about negative, let's say 75%. So it's coming up from the top of the original starting point and then offset. So the offset designates the point at which the next style function will begin during the animation. So zero is the very beginning and one is at the end. So you'll see how this works momentarily when we finish this off. All right, now we'll go ahead and copy this and paste it two times. So the opacity will go from zero or hidden from one fully. And we'll make this come past the original starting point by five or 35 pixels. This will be at 50% or 0.5 of the animation duration. So at a really 150 milliseconds, this style will occur. And then also make this one as well and make this at the original starting point of zero and make the offset one. So let's go ahead and save. All right, make sure it's refreshed fully. And there you go. That's a sequence-based animation. So as you can see, Angular offers you a great way to create and control a lot of great UI animations.